It's early April in Colorado, and the saying, if you don't like the weather, just give it an hour, is never more true than it is right now in the early spring. In this video, we'll explore around the state and we'll say goodbye to some of our wintering friends. And we'll say, oh, hey, how's it going? To some of our other friends who are just passing through. And we'll warmly welcome some of those who are brand new to the world all together. It's early spring. Let's do some birding in Colorado. Commonly found sitting on fence posts or being flushed away by cars while photographers try to take their picture, the return of mountain bluebirds to Colorado is a sure sign that spring is near. They will arrive in mid to late March, and generally what I look for in photographs is a nice contrasting background to make the blue really stand out, like snow. But to be honest, any perch they land on with a good contrasting background could still make for some really good photos. On this particular outing, I found about 50 of them out at Chatfield Reservoir in Jefferson County, and that was by far a personal best and the most I had ever seen all in one place. As you can see in this range map, they can be as far south as central Mexico during the winter, but then as they move back into the United States for the warmer months, they can end up as far north as Alaska. A 5.30 a.m. wake-up call saw me heading to eastern Colorado with the DFO group to search for the greater prairie chicken. I mean, what do you do with your days off? <laughs> the goal of the trip was not only to see the greater prairie chicken, which can be tough to find in eastern Colorado, but also to find the lek, which is the area where the males put on a bizarre mating ritual where they puff their chests up, drum their feet, and dance around trying to show off the females. While driving down one of the rural dirt roads where we thought the chickens might be, we did get a glimpse of this Merlin. Not only was it the best look of a Merlin I've ever had before, but it was also cool to see because this guy won't be hanging around much longer. It'll be heading up north for its breeding range. A call over the radio quickly snapped me out of my Merlin days because we had found some prairie chickens. They were literally about 50 yards away from where the Merlin was. I thought in this video sequence that the bizarre mating ritual was about to begin, but ultimately it didn't look like the female was very interested.
after observing the prairie chickens for about 15 minutes, they eventually flew off and we moved on with the trip. The greater prairie chicken is a near threatened species and is constantly facing a lot of challenges while it loses more of its population. The main contributor to this is habitat loss. There's just simply put, a lot of land gets converted for crops or oil and wind energy out in the Great Plains. And because so much of that habitat gets lost, the groups that are out there tend to be very isolated and there's not a lot of corridors to reach other groups. So that leads to a very small breeding pool. Throw on top of that, that they have a lot of competition from species like ring-necked pheasants, which are not native to North America. And to make matters even worse, it's still legal to hunt the greater prairie chicken in four states. After seeing the prairie chickens, we then turned our focus to one of my favorites. Ah yes, spring means the return of shorebirds. Along these rural dirt roads, there's all sorts of wetland habitats out there where it's a great place to see shorebirds, like these distant American avocets, which are one of my favorite, or this closely related favorite of mine, this black neck stilt. And as we were watching shorebirds, we did see another species that was also on the move here for the spring. As you can see in this video clip, it was a bonanza of shorebirds at this stop. We had Wilson snipes off in the distance, lesser yellow legs, greater yellow legs, and even some long-billed dowagers. A few days later, I was able to track down some American avocets closer to town, and fortunately, I was able to get a little bit closer to shoot this video. What I really love about the avocets in early spring is that breeding plumage where they're that really pretty color of orange, and that orange will actually last for a few months and won't fade until the end of the summer. I'd say probably about 11 or 12. Yeah. That's the most I've seen over there. Yeah, they are they are pretty active. Yeah. Um, and they're all bald eagles? Uh, no, these are great blue herons. Oh, they're blue herons. Yeah. I may be one of the few photographers out there that does not get annoyed when someone is walking by and they ask me what I'm looking at or, hey, can I take a look through your camera? I have no problem with it at all. In fact, I think it's awesome. And while I shot this great blue heron rookery that was up and going here for the spring, I had at least three or four different people walk by and ask about them. And that's when I realized that there is something about the great blue heron that definitely fascinates everyone. And I think it's the fact that they're a very unique looking bird. They almost seem prehistoric in a way, but uh, yeah, a definite sure sign that spring is here is when these rookeries get going. This rookery at Stanley Lake near Arvada is another great rookery to check out, not only because it's huge, but because it's got a great mix of species in there. You'll notice here from this angle that it's mostly double-crested cormorants, but if you look very closely on the edges, you'll see some gray blue herons in there as well. And in fact, this rookery is so big, I really had to back off my 600 millimeter lens all the way back out to 200 millimeters just to get it all in one shot. And what I find really fascinating about these rookeries in the spring is seeing all of the nest building. If you look really closely, you can see the cormorants that are flying in and out will have sticks in their mouths. If you really want to see a double crested cormorant rookery in full swing, your stop is here at Belmar in Lakewood. And 
and I'm not sure if a turtle log means it's spring, but um, yeah, they've got that there too. The morning I was there was very chaotic with cormorants coming in, landing, and then taking off. They always had sticks in their mouths as they built their nests up, and I will definitely be back to check up on the chicks in probably about a month. You may recognize this great horned owl's nest from a video I did in January. Well, I'm back, and now the space in the nest has definitely gotten a little bit tighter. This is one of the more popular great horned owl's nests around town, so I try to make my visits here infrequent and quick. We then made our way to another nest that I've been following for a few years in Arvada. And the good news is it has a really good angle to look up and see if there's any activity in the nest like you're seeing here. But the bad news is it's the only angle that you can see in. If you try to go to like the other side, you really get blocked off. So we stayed here and watched for a little bit to see if there was gonna be any activity, but they were mostly just sleeping. It was still just good to see another nest with healthy owlets in it. And for a little bonus stop, we went to the bald eagle's nest at Stanley Lake, where I had heard that an eaglet had been born. And you can see here, mom was up on the nest, but I never did see the eaglet ever emerge. And then the last stop of the day was another nest in Jefferson County in a green belt that I've been going to for years. And again, it's like the Arvada nest where there's really only one good angle to look up but it was great to see another healthy outlet in this nest as well. All right, well, that was the video of all of the early spring stuff that has been coming through Colorado that I have been out. Um, photographing and shooting um, pretty much everything since I've been back from Arizona. So, um, speaking of which, um, thank you so much for all of the great comments that people have put on the Arizona video. That actually has done really well. <laughs> and uh, I think almost up to like a thousand views, which is a lot for me. So, um, thank you again for all of the kind words um, and compliments about the Arizona video. Um, yeah, I thought it turned out really well, and uh, I'm glad it seems like most people are enjoying it. So hopefully you enjoyed this video too. And um, yeah, where do I want to start here? Um, I guess let's talk about the mountain bluebirds. So um, if you have been following the channel, you know that about a month ago, I'd put out another video about the mountain bluebirds, and it was a, not a great video, um, I didn't think. So I actually ended up deleting it off the channel. And um, in that video, I had gone out trying to find mountain bluebirds and I was having a very frustrating day and I wasn't getting a lot of good stuff. But then at the end, I got a few good shots. And so kind of my idea for that video was to be like, hey, you can go out and have like a really awful day. But at the end of the day, if you still make some decent shots, you know, there can be redemption. And that was kind of what I was going for in that video, but I just don't think it really hit the mark. So I had, uh, so I deleted that video off the channel. Um, but then about a week later, right before I went to Arizona, I went out for the mountain bluebirds again. 
and obviously you can see in this video that is the result. It was much more successful, so um, I'm happy to have got like sort of a redemption with the Mountain Bluebirds, especially with the video. So um, that was that whole section, and um, yeah, I think I think that turned out really well. I really enjoyed uh, seeing those Mountain Bluebirds. There was just they were everywhere <laughs> like the one day I had gone out before was not very good I was having a hard time finding them and then the next time I went out for them they were just everywhere and so um I was able to get some really good stuff um so that is uh kind of what was going on with the mountain bluebirds um the greater prairie chicken <laughs> that is another bird I had never been out for um and that was part of a DFO field trip uh like I mentioned in the video and um, Diane, who was leading, uh, was a co-leader of the trip. Um, she's been going out to see these prairie chickens for years and years. So she kind of knew some of the hot spots out there in Eastern Colorado, literally in the middle of nowhere. You're really like on County Road JJ intersecting with like Bob's Road, you know. <laughs> and um, but we found them out there. And uh, like I said, first time I had ever gone out to see them. And um, you know, like they were pretty far away out in the field where we did see them. So the video clips you saw um, was me all the way in at 600 millimeters. And they're in that tall kind of grass. So it's really hard to make like good photos or um, in the video kind of, you know, just it was just cool to see them in that experience. And um, yeah, it was awesome. And then that was later that day. The whole point of that trip was to go see the prairie chickens in the morning and then go try to find shorebirds um, throughout the afternoon. Again, out on all these little back county roads that I've been on mostly for storm chasing. Um, I've never really been out there a lot for birding trips. So um, it was cool to go out there and be like, so I, in, I was one of the volunteers who drove. And so I had a full car and you know, we were driving down these nowhere roads. And I was like, oh, actually, I saw a tornado right over there in 2013. And everyone's like, well... Are, were you okay? And I was like, what? They're like, what, did you live out here? And I was like, oh, no. I No, my other thing that I do is storm chasing. And they're like, are you crazy? And I was just like, oh, yeah. My two worlds kind of collided right there. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, that outing was a lot of fun. And that was a long outing. That was a 4.30 a.m. wake-up call so that I could get to the spot by 5.30. And, um, and that was a whole day thing, which was... Uh, blast and we saw so many things it was great and um yeah and then of course all the great horned owl nests um around town here um like i said the the nests that i featured in the video are um ones that i've been following you know for years like a lot of times the owls will come back and nest in the same place um in the uh green belt one the very last one i showed um it's a big green belt and they don't always nest in the exact same tree, but they all do generally come back to that area. So each year it's kind of fun to go try to find where they are in the green belt, you know, for this year. But, um, yeah, obviously found them this year and, um, yeah, good to see the outlets so far are all doing well. Um, you know, it's, it's, there seems like every year there's always kind of some heartbreak where it's like, Oh, you'll go visit. And it's like, well, there were three outlets and now there's, now there's one, and so, you know, it's really hard. It's really tough for those guys to make it um, consistently. And, you know, it's really tough for, um, you know, the, the mom and dad owls to, like, keep predators away. And then sometimes just things happen. And uh, so far, all of the nests that I've been visiting, I haven't heard of any outlet loss. Um, so it looks like it's going pretty well. So um, I will probably maybe, you know, in, like, maybe like a month, probably go check back up on the nest just to see once they, they grow up really fast. Like they get big fast and, um, you know, they'll start fledging and they'll start flying and, um, but you know, they hang around with mom and dad for quite a while, um, before they take off on their own. So it's always cool to go see progress, um, you know, like a month later. So that's probably what I'll do. So, um, but yeah, so thanks so much again for watching. I think uh, you know, we're still in spring migration all the way through May here, so we still got lots of stuff coming up. And um, I really want to try to get out. I'm going to switch gears um, off of birds, um, you know, for probably for a video. <laughs> and uh, it is fox kit season. And um, I have a pretty good lead on a fox den 
that I need to go start checking up on to see what's going on. So um, I'm hoping for some Fox kits um, coming up here soon. And uh, But again, like I said, spring migration for birds is still ongoing. So that is always going to be uh, super busy coming up here for the next month, month and a half. So, um, But yeah, I also want to, um, I was going to say my... Uh, I did a video a couple videos ago that was called Winter Photography or Winter Raptor Photography at the Arsenal. Um, I would like to do a spring version of that because we've got new raptors in and winter raptors out. So um, I think it'd be a, a cool idea to show everyone, oh yeah, these guys are here now. You know, like Swainson's Hawks are uh, back now and Osprey and yeah. So um, I think that's probably a video that's going to come up here soon. But yeah, so thank you again so much again for all the feedback on the Arizona trip. Um, I'm I'm just so glad people really enjoyed that video because I I put a lot of effort into that one. So um, again, thank you so much. So until the next one, I will see you guys later. Thanks again for watching. Bye.